Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone program brought to you by NVIDIA. Our last match of the day is uh, Faramir versus Stripe Code. We're getting set up really quick. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to take an opportunity to talk a little bit more about what's going on here. So, uh, Nimsh, why don't we break down what's happened so far in the six weeks, where everyone currently sits, because I think I was really intrigued by uh, who you were saying was on top after six weeks of play. Oh, yeah, you were really intrigued that uh, Reynard was actually third. Um, and uh, that's not true anymore because Reynard actually fell down to fourth. So right now the standings are on the first place, uh, it's Life Coach with five wins and no losses. Then um, Tice, four wins, two losses. Freshka, three wins, no losses. Uh, I believe like Life, Life Coach just played um, eight games. That's the most. Um, then Reynard is having uh, place number four with three wins and no losses. Tides of Time, three wins, hyped to wins, Gara, Pimping Ho on eight, Forsen ninth. So Forsen is well, Forsen actually has a two two after four games. That's pretty surprising. I would expect a four oh or a four from Forsen, but the two two <laughs> is uh, decent. Yep. Strife Crow on tenth. Six oh eleventh. Trump twelve. Colento thirteenth. Dog fourteen. Faramir fifteenth. And RDU having an amazing score after eight matches at full 1-7. Gotcha, yeah. Well, uh, that's that wraps up the, the full whole standings here. And we'll see where Faramir will land at the, the end of it. I know RDU said, for example, the last two weeks of NVIDIA are the most important for, uh, for everybody here. So it kind of resembles that of ladder. You know, after a couple of months of play, you know, you, you have a little bit of fun, figure out what's best. And then you buckle down and get serious. Keep in mind, guys, twenty five thousand dollars on the line, hundred world championship points, and uh, we're going to find out to see if Faramir can turn around uh, with the same lineup. Uh, Shrifeco, of course, is going to be playing Warrior, the Zoo, and the Druid. Now, do you know if Shrifeco is testing around with Grim Patron Warrior at all? Oh yeah, he is playing a lot, and. Um... Like recently, had a discussion with Tides of Time about the, the the Green Patron deck, where Tides was skeptic, and Tides was saying that the deck is not that consistent, and he knows it's right, but he didn't feel like it's really the thing yet. And Strife Core was like, "Yeah, it is consistent. There's so much draw, and it, it's really good versus aggro." So, um, like even yesterday on stream, Strife Core was testing the deck and playing a lot with it. It was fun to watch. And I'm sure like it will be fun to watch right now. I don't believe Str uh, Strifecore is bringing a standard Contra Warrior to this tournament. Like He is an innovator. He is the, the creator. Uh, like He didn't create Green Patron, but he is the guy who is actually working on those lists and having fun with unrefined decks, trying to bring something new to the metagame. Uh, with the Warlock, I would say like it's probably Zoo. Uh, Strifecore really likes the Zoo deck, and he liked it in the past. Uh, with Handlock, he doesn't feel that Handlock is... Um, well, he likes Handlock, but he said it. He said to me that Handlock is too difficult for him right now, <laughs> and that's too difficult for the Strife Crew. No way. He's yeah, like he, he has to be rested to play it, and um, with the Zoo, he can kind of like you know make split decisions. Even though he's still thinking, like Strife Crew is this different style of playing um, a Zoo Dex. And then obviously Druid is the Druid, and everybody plays kind of like the same list. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, it's the list that I've started originating from guys like Strife Crow, um, bringing interesting dynamics. I mean, a year ago, people were still playing Watcher Druid, and they were playing like uh, Sunder Fury Protectors or like, you know, Defender of Argus with um, with the Silence, you know. Yeah, on the, the ancient watchers. If you remember that, that was really funny because it's like how times have evolved since then, where Druid got way more aggressive, and people realized that you can abuse uh, Force of Nature, Savage Or. So that's that's a long time ago, but in the end, it's like Druid still relatively remained the same. Wondering uh, where things kind of sit after uh, after Black Rock Mountain finishes release. I'm looking forward to the fifth wing here, Lot Nimsh. I think Black Wing Corruptor looks awesome. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to the Dragonkin Sorcerer. I think that card is sleeper for how good it could be. Can you just tell our, our viewers what, the, what those cards are doing? Because not everybody is... Right, 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 right. 
So the Blackwing Corruptor is a uh, five mana five four, which acts kind of like Fire Elemental. If you're holding a dragon, it deals three damage to anything yourself. You know, if you want to BM your own minions, if you wanted to go for cool combo synergies, of course you want to target their minions too. And so it's actually I think an this, orc. Yeah, well, I mean, it opens up a, an interesting world of possibilities for both uh, control dragons, or maybe if you want to be really aggressive, you can use it as just burn. Um, I also think the Dragon Sorcerer is interesting too, because that one is if every you ever you target it with something, a spell it gains plus one plus one. Maybe that can bring priest into viability. I don't know. People are saying power word shield is a really easy one or valence chosen. You know, but may, maybe you, you you do something else, uh, and I'm missing it, obviously. You know, like you know, shaman. You give it a rock biter, it gives buffs one one damage. That kind of stuff is really cool. Uh, I love more combo and synergy potential. And more importantly, dragons are awesome, Nimsh. Oh, yeah. Um, that sounds definitely amazing. And I would love to see more dragon decks. And uh, Harson needs dragons. Like, everybody loves dragons. Come on. And uh, in a fantasy setting, in World of Warcraft, dragons are always so important. And after all those mechs from GVG and, you know, Goblin Gnomes explosions, we just need some good dragon breaths and some some scales to, to scale the metagame. I agree. I agree. Now, the card pool is still relatively small, generally speaking, for a CCG or DCG, whatever you want to call this. Uh, <clears throat> so as Black Ring, as Black Rock Wattenming gets released this week, I uh, hope you guys keep an open mind. We're going to implement it for next week as well. Uh, and that's part of what's been exciting too. You've been seeing people adapt and introduce these new decks and cards into their lineups as time goes on. All right. So I here we go. Game number one is about to begin, Nimsh. Let's see. Farmy versus Strife Crow. The lineups are interesting. Pollen versus Druid is going to start it. And Farmy gets an amazing hand. Like those cards are the cards you want to wake up with when you're playing versus Druid. And a coin, obviously. Shielded mini ball on one, shielded mini ball on two. Then Master for Battle, Pilot Shredder. And Dr. Boom, which Life Coach actually keeps most of the time in this matchup, in the opening hand. Yeah, uh, really powerful stuff here um, from Farmers and Strife Crow in the meantime. Looks like he's just chilling, man. He's just in not the zone. Good. Listening to good music, you know? Yep. The beats. Farmer forgot to end the turn. Uh, Strife goes, ah, well. Like I don't get wild growth. It's gonna be in trouble here. Two shielded mini bots. I mean, that's just just so efficient. The minions can deal with almost anything collab uh, collectively. And he gets through silver, one of the best cards versus Druid. Uh Strifecore picks up an innervate, which might help him. Um maybe innervate on Torison next turn will help with a bit of uh of a ramp. Oh, it helped a lot because now uh, Drake and Swipe become seven mana as opposed to nine. True. Something to look forward to. And that might be really valuable because the spell power of Drake with the Swipe is like, I mean, you, you have to start controlling the state of the board as soon as you see um, Muster for Battle. But although, he, I mean, that might not stop him from just using Swipe now. Uh, even though there is no coin for farm here anymore, and he do, will not uh, suspect a Quartermaster here. I think swipe might still be the play. Like you really need to consider how much damage are you going to take. Like if you don't swipe this board, what happens? You take eight. If you swipe the board, you take three. So you you prevent five points of damage, but then your turns are still all right, I guess. You can swipe and then innervate Wrath. <laughs> that sounds just really poor. I mean, Thorson makes all these options possible and more because the innervate pays off by get, getting you more innervates, right? Yeah, also, uh, Farmir has to kill Thorison. Like, there is no way he can leave it on board. He has a true silver, but uh, Thorison is tanking some damage here. All right. Uh, Shrifeco now will definitely be looking for a swipe option just because his opponent m most definitely has an opportunity to play that quartermaster and punish him. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on one sec. 
Let's see if he swipes. He's in two man, so he can uh, swipe and wrath. Playing Drew yeah. the Claw does allow him to limit the amount of quartermaster value, though. You know, there's only two silver hair recruits now that I think about it. Yeah, do you really want to swipe? Um, what about like Azur Drake and Raft the two two? I yeah, that's also quartermaster too. But you, I think you're afraid of the true silver getting value. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like you can't play Azur Drake and true silver. Hmm. I wouldn't mind like attacking into two two with a with a four four and maybe using shapeshift. Because then you're forcing them to use Trisilver or you on your uh, shade, but then again, like shade is able to trade into that sludge belcher, right? And now you can play Drew the Claw, and he can't um, he can't contest it easily with the one attack uh, slime, slime, and you can't uh, kill off the shoe, so he needs a little bit more gas. Yeah, that's really well played by Strife Crew here. And actually, Strife Crew is, is back in the game, back in the saddle, even though Farmir had this super strong, aggressive opening. But right. Farmir is still in a very good position, like having boom on curve into Tyrion, and then turn nine, just having whatever he needs. I mean, it's true, but the shade is getting way out of control. Oh my goodness. Um, Do you go for face? I mean, like, if you um, play Keeper, kill the 1 2, play Shredder, or even like, even an Azure Drake, and just go 10 to face. I'd even consider just playing Drew the Claw and Charge Moon and like hitting the face. Because, like, it's just. It's like you're you're in a position where your opponent clearly had an, like a a consecration turn um, to deal with everything, and he couldn't generate it. I mean, this generates the the most amount of board momentum too. Yeah. Well, I like not playing Druid of the Clock here because you do have concealed for damage. Right. That's true. So you Strife can kind of going go ham. It's getting aggressive. Wow! What a turnaround. This. This power trader has to deliver. No, it's not good enough. If Strasbourg gets a savage roar, is that offer? Uh, is is that enough? Oh, he's Dr. got seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, eighteen damage. No, it's just a little bit short. Still, just playing Doctor Boom here is amazing. Like you just killed a free five with. Uh, shade, I guess. Kill the one, two, or two, four, four, face. Mm, that's actually that even might be better because you do protect your shade. Yeah, and shade gets even better value. I mean, it's kind of like keeping a doctor boom. He's thinking He's... about attacking the one one. Yeah. I like going for face, like putting them at eight. Right, but what is the difference between 8 and 12 at this stage? I think staying, keeping the board as healthy as possible. Like, he really needs Consecration. And even if he plays Consecration, it's half of his mana that he's spending. Oh, look at this. That was actually pretty smart by Strife Crow. If he would not clear that 2-3, then a True Silver and 2-3 trades into 4-6, and the 1-1 one, one kills the 7-1. Right now, uh, Farmer doesn't have a way to, to clear the Shade. So basically, shade cancels the effect of the the heal bot, right? Oh man, now you get double dip. The shade's gonna hit he's, right now. He has ten. He's one off. He's nineteen damage. <laughs> this is so sick. Nineteen Struck damage, broken. and um, well, he doesn't have to cash in the nineteen. He can like go. To 15, kill off the Acolyte, make sure that it doesn't uh, draw more than one card. Whoa, eight points of damage. That shade. Wait, it, when did he play that shade? Was it like turn three? Um, is, that, is it still the same shade? Yeah, you you're right. Enough? That shade's been alive for, uh, for six turns now. Seven turns. Well, how um, can Farmer win this? He can't. There's no way for him to actually deal with it. He needed quality consecration. Or he needs some way to deal the damage to that pilot shredder. 
needs to be Doomsayer, and then needs to kill off everything. And the boom boss need to do less than four damage. You know what's, what what was the sickest thing? Like he still couldn't deal with the shade. That shade would live whatever happens. And Strifeker is going to take game number one versus Farmir. Really what impressive play. play again from Strifeker. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like it's so subtle, but a lot of times when people go for those plays, they're very results based. They're like. Well, uh, I attack with this shade, and then it died to a consecration. So that was probably the wrong play. But um, you know, a lot of times, like it, it's also, it also happens that, like in pro matches, you always see the guy just draw the consecration, and everyone makes the joke about RNG and drawing. But like in those scenarios, that's that's where you go to sh demonstrate that correct plays uh, are the highest percentage plays based off what you information you see. And Striker was rewarded not only punishing Faramir but with the win, but coming back in a scenario where that per curve from Paladin is brutal. It's one of the hardest to come back from in the entire game because Paladin snowballs that tempo and momentum. Yeah, I'm actually amazed. Like, and also, Strife was able to, to know when to go Excellent. for face and when to step back and kill that Sunfield Protector to protect his shade and put himself um, in a very good winning position. And that's amazing, but uh, there's already... And game number two is going to start Green Patron versus Druid. Um, All right, so, so here we go. Uh, Green Patron Warrior, I think personally, is pretty decent against Druid. If you can ever set up a board where Grim Patron is not easy removed, what does Druid actually do? Uh, you've I think got it's execute. amazing. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, the executes allow you to really leverage um, the board even more. Uh, and then you have a really good card draw to keep up with Druid's um, and Druid's big minions that are trading pretty effectively. Now, the one thing that can throw it off is a big innervate play like that. That's really hard to come back from as a Grim Patron one. And there is an innervate for Farmir. Um, there's no coin though, so he can't innervate the, the Shredder. But he is his hand is really clunky with all those four drops. Where for Strife Crew. His hand is all right. He has fireworks, a great card. Uh, he will be able to get. Uh, oh, he's getting. Uh, actually, Farmer will get a free drop. That's really important. Um. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to. It's going to be pretty important to not take too much damage, though. Like another thing that could be against this warrior deck is that um, it can't gain life as easily. Oh man, that's that's a troll. The Dru uh, but, Druid yeah. can gain life now. Right. And it's so, like, um, Druid can race you. With this, ma with this match, uh, I was watching Farmir playing versus... I don't... Uh, no, not the Farmir. Like, I, I was watching Farbad playing this matchup. Like, uh, Farbad was playing Green Patron versus Druid. And he went really far to the point where there was no coming back for Druid. But we had a disconnect and we had to re replay the game. And the second game, Druid versus... Uh, like, Green Patron versus Druid... Farba just slammed cards on board without thinking. It seemed that way. And he still won. He had still a crushing win. So I think this matchup is really good for the Green Patron deck if you know how to play it. Yeah, the this is a really interesting scenario that he chose to leave up the um the what's it called? The uh Frothing Berserker alive. Because that has a high potential to backfire, surely, surely based off the fact that you know how much uh, burst is in this deck. Oh man. Uh, so Frodding can deal lots of damage already. Well, it's important to keep gaining the card draw. Yeah. No, no need to get too greedy just yet. Um, and things will naturally set it up. Like a battle rage is pretty easy to get off now that you have two whirlwinds. Keep of the Grove can shut this down too, relatively easily. And you know what, man? That light well, that light well is really annoying because now it's going to heal that shade back up to be a five-five. Well, shade is going to die this turn, I believe. Uh, I think like the play is Taskmaster Shade and then Whirlwinds and uh, Balrage. Yeah. Sounds completely fair to me. And uh, the Slight Whale also can't heal everything at the same time. Not well, maybe the Light will heal itself. 
Strife creeping up the green patron. So already three pieces of the combo in his hands. Just needs a bit more a bit more time. Well, Emperor Thorson, really good pressure. Um, not the most value you've ever seen. <laughs> Three cards is nothing. It, it's not like the the highest impact, but at the same time, it's significant enough where you feel like, man, I really have to deal with this. Hmm. Well, I think uh, Striker might go for Green Patron, Whirlwinds, Execute, Coin Execute. But then uh, Raph will actually shut down Patrons and... Um, and Druid of the, like, the Keeper of the Grove can trade into them. But I don't hate this play. This is uh, setting up some kind of board. He might yeah. also go for... His biggest problem is that he doesn't he doesn't actually have like a great natural synergy here um, with the Grim Patient outside of just a Whirlwind effect. So he's going to be losing a little bit of the card count. Straight up roll and execute and then Dread Corsair. I like it. Just saving that green patron. Because he knows that a simple Wrath can uh, and a minion trade can stop. Um, but the light and well, it's going to heal up the, the Keeper of the Grove again. And it does! 2 of 4. Yeah. Dude, that card is so troll. Oh my god. Light will MVP. I guess it's good in this matchup, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> At this stage, it's like almost anything goes. All right, well, oh. Death Spite, pretty great draw here. Um, you allows you to set up to kill up the, the Ancient of Lore. But one thing, again, that we have to consider is the, the health. The health count of uh, Strife Crow. He can't drop too low here. I think that Death Spite is even more... Um, like, Death Spite is so great right now at this spot because not only you threaten Ancient of Lore, you do have another whirlwind effect. And the, the problem that Druid is uh, having against this, um, this deck is that when you get all those green patrons, what do you do with them? How do you clear them? Like, you can't swipe that board because if you swipe, they are going to summon more. Uh, so, Grim Patron is winning just oh, by man. swarming the board. Here's another thing, too Grim Patron, like, you really want to make sure that the Warstone Commander doesn't die here. Yeah, it stops, it stops giving your minions charge. So you want to load up the board as much as you can. All right, Strafgrid is going for it, I believe. And he's also one mana off to have an amazing battle rage. Okay, the bomb is going to hit. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Wow, hit the Grim Patron for one. <laughs> Farmer's well, like, like Farmer's so tilted, man. His RNG all day long has just not been ideal. Man, if it hits another one for small amount, it hits face, so it doesn't matter at all. Um, and now Strife can plant it fully. Right. So he can attack the Ancient of Lore, and then kill off the Doctor Boom. Be safe from combo range, unless his opponent has Innervate. And then has a full uh, had a have a full board, but then time is running and he has to act fast. That's the problem that a lot of players are facing. Nah, he's got it. he's got this. He's got plenty of time. Um, now this is problematic. You can shut down the Warsong Commander, but the the Grim Patrons are already here. Sylvanas time, perhaps. Well, no. there is a swipe actually. Um, with the swipe, you can clear. You can silence the one of the free freeze, and then you swipe. But then you are, you are not getting uh, worsen out of the way. Right. Yeah, this is like, look at this. Like He has all the cards. Like Farmer has all the removal cards, or more or less, uh, most of them. How can he clear this board with the combination of those cards? He can't clear the board. Like, he can't clear patrons, but then worsen is going to stay alive. Um, force is not great. Like, doing two damage to those guys, not doing much. I have yeah, Savannah's is his best play, but um, dude, there's, I mean, now you can draw cards with uh, the Battle Rage, and that might lead into more cards, which might lead into more patrons. There is Commander. Yeah, Battle Rage first, I suppose. Yeah, draw two cards, see what's happening. 
Unstable Go is amazing because now he can create more, more patrons. Oh, man. Imagine if he had the uh, Frothing Berserker. He still can get it, too. Yeah, he can still get the Frothing. Oh, wow. All right. This well, turn... You can't, can't get the Whirlwind Effect before... Or after the, the Frothing Berserker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nuts! Everyone, get in here! It's happening! Strife um, Girl I, is having a, a, a big party, and Farmy yeah. is not invited. Actually, he is invited, sorry, and Farmy doesn't want to even go. <laughs> I, I think he doesn't have that much fun, though. Um, You can weapon up, weapon the lab easily. Oh, he, is he going to... Yeah, there's no point. He, he, does sh uh, he should hypothetically armor up just in case his opponent does have the Innervate. True, true. This is the, the Grim Patient War in a nutshell, man. You need to add the Yakety Sax montage music to this. All right, what is happening here? Is he going for... He's just trying to race his opponent here. But then there's seven damage, seven points of damage on board, plus uh, seven, that's 14, one off, seriously. Uh, he can draw a card for potential activator for Gromosh. True, um, but it's not easy. Like there is whirlwind. Uh, I'm not sure if Strife is running in rages. I don't think so. Cool task. Yeah, cool task might might be uh, the the thing. It doesn't matter. He can just play armor smith and be really safe. But look at this. Is this is still a very uh, difficult turn for Strifecrow because you can have possible uh, possible lethal. Like if you get um, frauding, maybe that's lethal then. That's right. Well, uh, first he's going to try and maximize the Grim Patience. I, I'm surprised he hasn't tried drawing with the Acolyte first. Unless he's planning to use Acolyte to go face. Do you think like the Druid deck is getting dwarfed right now? Oh, is that There's it? Frothing. Seven, ten. <laughs> oh man, he should have done it the other way. He would have had lethal. All right, well, okay, Farmir <laughs> concedes. Just, just goes to show you, man. Striker, one of the best technical players in the world. Uh, still learning the Grim Patron Warrior in and out. Yeah, he did that right. first, guaranteed lethal. Like, if he drew, he would have played the Frothing Berserker. The trade damage would have been plus two each time. And it uh, would have been really funny to watch. But uh, Farmir taps out. And that means it's a 2-0 lead for Strife Crow. Yeah. And... Um... This only shows the the excellence of the Green Patron deck, and uh, I I can't wait till guys like Strife Crow, Colento, Hyped, and all the like Savits, you know, Farbat, they just they, they face each other with those decks, and they show the deck being really viable. And um, Ties of Time is always saying that hey, there are counters to this deck. Like the deck is good, that it can be countered, but. Like even if a couple of, of of decks counter it, it's still very powerful versus most popular decks like Druid, um, Zoo, like hunt, um, Face Hunter. So, um, all right. So the Green Patron deck is out. Uh, Farmir still has all three decks that we've seen before, and then Strife Crew is down to his Warlock deck. And uh, if this is a Zoo, that might be difficult for Farmir. He needs to free O a Zoo deck. Yeah, and that's, that's not going to be easy to do considering Zoo is so consistent and strong. Really powerful turns. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to see if Faramir can, can do this. But with Druid and Paladin and Shaman, all decks that can struggle versus the Zoo, I wouldn't blame Faramir for just trying to play it out the first few turns. But if it's not working out, uh, tapping out here. NVIDIA doesn't seem like Farmer's tournament so far. Maybe you can turn around the next couple weeks, but you know, when you're in 15th place and you're up against Strife Crow and you have one of the toughest matchups, uh, in my opinion, you know, one of the one of the hardest ones that you can overcome here with the new modern two. I don't know, man. It's it's gonna be a really long, difficult journey. Yeah. It's definitely going to be one, but um, then the zoo is not the zoo that I expected, really. This is more like a demon. Huh, yeah, I guess it's definitely more like demon lock. For Farmir, though, like he has a really nice start. Uh, Coin Juggler, Shielded Minibots, then he has um, Master for Battle. 
Harrison Jones is not going to help much, but Torison is always welcome. Okay, well, from here, I guess you just have to play out pretty normally. Um, Void Terror, a little bit awkward right now. I'm sure you're happy to kill the juggler and maybe just slam that Void Terror. To contest. Yeah, it challenges the, um, the mini bot, okay. Of course, you uh, can also slam problems. the owl. Just uh, silence it to two, because it challenges it um, one to one as well. Yep. Is that your only silence in the deck, though? Um, possibly. Uh, he might be playing double owl, but he never was a fan. But then again. You can deal. You do have Savannah in your hand. So if you are thinking, how do I deal with Tyrion? You do have the answer already. Right. Okay. So this is around uh, Buster for battle. Yep. Let's try for some kind of AOE. Insta call. I mean, he can fight it, uh, man for man with cards like Implosion, Haunted Creeper. Also, is pretty decent to fight against these one ones. Not a Void Terror. Hunting Creeper is amazing to fight the 1-1s, and Farmir still doesn't have the Quartermaster, but Farmir is getting ahead. Yeah, and now you can play this Acolyte of, pl plain, Ac Acolyte of Pain and start potentially drawing some really good cards here so that Emperor Thorson gets even better value. Strife Queen is something like a Void Color Implosion to have... An amazing Void Terror, Void Color turn. Gets a Juggler. Juggler is actually alright. If not for the Acolyte of Pain, but... Well, at this stage, you can't stop his opponent from drawing cards unless he draw taps into, like, the uh, second Abuse of Sergeant. So there's two ways to go about it. You can kind of embrace it. Just play Knife Juggler, Suicide, play Void Terror afterwards, build up a bigger minion. Or you can just tap and be really defensive. Uh, he's seen one uh, Abuse Surgeon already, right? right? So the chance of getting second one is really low. Well, I mean, the other option is to tack into a 1-1 one -one and then Void Terror the other two 1-1s. One -ones. So that way Acolyte doesn't guarantee get it. But then, of course, we know Faramir has the, the Alder Peacekeeper. So <laughs> it won't really matter. Yeah, he can deal with the Void Terror. All right, so now he goes for Acolytes. He goes for the I want to kill off the one ones for the Quartermaster. Oh, man. First knife to the Acolyte. The second knife kills the dude. Are we going to see the Void Terror? Yep, it's a 5-5. Five five. For free mana, pretty good. And that's another knife, by the way. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I would say a 5-5 five, five for free mana is pretty good. Reasonable. Reasonable for sure. What's the best way to go about this? I guess you want a Peacekeeper so you can get the draw off the Acolyte again. Then uh, use the weapon and the 1-1 one, one to trade into a Knife Juggler. That that juggle, by the way, is a really big deal. The fact that it didn't go to the 1-1. One, because one, if the Knife Juggler stayed alive, uh, almost uh, comp it could be a really different scenario where if he draws implosion and then all these other things happen, Knife Shocker stays alive and does a lot of damage. On the other hand, Voitara is now an ultimate dude slayer. Well, until another Voitara comes down. And you Voitara the Voitara. And creates a void in our hearts. Or terror. Is this the yeah. list that Kalento used, by the way, to climb a number one legend? Um, I'm not sure exactly. It might be a bit different. Do you play I know Shibana Double Void Terror was crucial in that deck, and some people have it in, some people don't have it. You know, people are more like board centric with Sea Giant, and then some people are more like tempo centric with Void Terror. Uh, Strife was always a fan of Void Terror. Um, before next Ramos, he was so happy about the Rubin Egg that he can finally play the card. Getting a 2 here is, is tough. Not only he is behind, he's getting better RNG. Ah, oh, Quartermaster. It's going to be really useful. 
Well, you know, it looks like, uh, looks like Faramir's in a pretty good spot. I think it's an amazing spot with, um, how much mana is that? That's seven points of mana for free with Thorison. And Strafkar has no way to clear that. Well, that's Tyrion for seven mana. Of course, you don't necessarily trust your opponent on uh, being able to handle Tyrion appropriately in an optimal way for you. But man, so many possibilities. Look at this. Muster for battle and quartermaster is six mana now. Yeah. This is actually amazing. Next turn, it turns to four mana. Let me think. Um, I think I would like to see Trisilver into the Void uh, Walker, kill the 5-5. Five five. On the other hand, you're getting so much mana from Torison, and it's like, how do you lose the game after Torison staying alive for one more turn at least? Right. No oh, man. Strife Queen needs to top deck a Shadow Flame, which is normally well. There is, I think, one copy sometimes. Yeah, but it's still rare, like you said. Another alternative is just to keep Sylvanas alive. Let as a, let your opponent keep building up cards and just have Sylvanas have a high impact value. Like play the Void Caller. Oh wait, hold on. Void Caller, Void Terror, Malkin. Uh, not wait. I'm not loving it that much. If you play, maybe just attack with Savannah's Implosion, yeah. one thing, and then play the Void Terror. Implosion's got a high chance of killing one of these recruits. Sixty-seven percent, and he rolls four, so it equals out. It sometimes always equals out. Like people get two and four, two threes. I never seen like somebody got two and two in the same game. Oh well, let me let me show you next time I ladder nimsh. Oh, okay. It feels like it happens very often to my opponents. I get really lucky. My opponents always roll two and two against me. I don't know why. Well, you are a lucky person. Oh, Wait, yeah. are we playing a lot against Reynard? Uh, yeah, I, I've been helping him practice. Maybe that's why. Possibly. Dude, this Malganis, by the way, if these imps stay alive, big damn. You talk about Silver and Recruits and Quartermaster. I mean, we got the ultimate Quartermaster with Malganis. And Faramir respects that. Look at that. He's going to take out all these imps one by one, realizing the potential of them. There are still two demons on the board, though, and Malganis can come down just by attacking into Tyrion. With a business decision, what does it change? Hmm. Wow, this is six mana. He can play everything here. Right. So you play the knife juggler first. Yeah. Abusive. Yeah, what do you abusive? Or what, how do you place the minions the as well? Like... I want to see the void color because you're guaranteed trading it in. And then. You trade in the one, two, five, uh, the two, six. Mm. Yeah, the two, five, so you can attack into the six, six. That's really awkward. Like, Actually, you need the knife really to get matter. the shield. Also, I wonder about Strife Goes position. Oh, yeah, you position it so that way Void Call is the only thing that gets eaten. There is equality, though. Wait, he's not going to get a knife in here. He's going to kill Tyrion with um, with both of those guys. Right. He's gonna crash so the okay. Well, equality. Eleven. I mean, that's just oh, a card of consecration. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. And it should be over right now, right? This is like uh, six, yeah. seven. That says uh, 12. It's not yet, I believe. That's uh, It's like way too much damage. Like, you know, Faramir's outlasted Shrifegar at this point. So, you know, we're going to game number four. And, you know, you know, the Shaman deck, for example, can last outlast against this deck. It can 
uh, get those hexes down really importantly on those big minions and lightning storm the imps. Who knows? I think we might see four game fives today, Nimsh. I'm feeling it. It is possible. And we've seen Farmer doing that um, against Gar. Like he never gave up and he played all those games. And right now he also knows a lot about Strife Cross deck. This is not a zoo. This is a demon lock. And um, he still has like, what, a druid and the shaman, as you said. Shaman versus demon lock has a lot of tools. Like you do have those hexes. You do have earth shocks. He has lightning bolts to help him so loud. He has lightning storm for the imps. Um, so I agree with you that Shaman might be good versus this. And then Druid, knowing what kind of warlock you're facing, might be helpful. So I, Harmir is still in the, um, in this match and he can actually take it. Yeah, exactly. So, well, that that's going to be uh, an interesting dynamic. I want to see more of what this zoo deck can do too. I think Void Terror players are always really cool because it's just like a, it's a really cool dynamic. You know, you don't really see too much self-sacrifice in these decks nowadays. It's all about like snowball momentum and Void Terror is like, boom, you just like eat your own minions and you grow bigger and then you slash things and then you get a big game hunter. <laughs> That's I would like to see the new demon so. card, by the way. Uh, Demon's Wrath, is it? Dealing oh, to damage right. to all non demon that's, creatures. That's live, right? For um Yeah, it is. Oh. So maybe Strife Crew is actually playing this deck to, to test out the new card and uh, show if it's playable. That's interesting. That's really oh interesting. apparently he changed to zoo. Or did he? Uh well it could be just everything, right? He does have Bane of Doom in this deck too, which is interesting. Yeah. I wanna see the Bane of Doom. Just summon two Malganus. Or even just like, you know, the funniest thing about Bane of Doom is like, or cards like Bane of Doom slash Pilot Shredder is that a lot of times you think of the worst case scenario and then another thing comes out, which is also the worst case scenario, but you just didn't think about it. It's like Web Spinner, for example. You always yeah. worry about dying to King Crush. But what happens if you just get like a Silverhand Patriarch and that's like the one taunt card that happens to lose you the game? Like Firebat at BlizzCon, for example. Silverback. Yeah. But like it's really in possible. Bane of Doom, it's like the same exact thing. What if you Bane of Doom something and you get like Felguard and Felguard's like the 3-5 taunt that just so happens to complicate the Druid combo and you can't kill him, you know? Imagine Bane of Doom. <laughs> Somebody plays Bane of Doom against you and he gets an Illidan. Are you prepared? No, absolutely not, man. Yeah, you are not prepared. And then Illidan just takes over the board. So it can happen. Wow, insta-call oh. swipe. If that's not a communication that you have swipe number two, I don't know what it is. Uh, what do you do, though? Like, if you play Imp Im Gang Boss here, maybe you just tap. Yeah, maybe you tap and then um, play a... Abusives are just too damaged either way. I guess you could wait till after swipe. You can I tap. I think it's Strife Crow. Oh, uh, now that you have Egg, you don't want to use Power of Mommy. Hmm. Yeah, I think you just uh, just go for face and pass. Like Strife Crow right now is trying to look into farm your soul. It's still uh, it's still sick damage on board. So Drew the Claw, you can trade into it and play Imp Gang Boss. Uh, with Abusive Sergeant to pick up good trades. If you play Sludge Belcher, you definitely have good trades, and you can play Imp Gang Boss. I mean, it's pretty okay just to attack with everything. Pass. Yeah, it seems like a clear swipe, a clear second swipe in hand. So you do definitely just uh, tap yeah. and pass. I think if Faramir took a screenshot and sent it to Strife Crow over Skype, it would have been less obvious than just doing what he did. <laughs> yeah. Because it was... <laughs> Like, I can agree with no that way you're fooling Strife Crow with that type of swipe play. All right, so now he can play the Imp in Gang Boss, and um, I think just pass after that again. It's a bit awkward in mana, but it's not bad. And then Farmir on turn six, like, what is Druid normally doing? Just playing Sylvanas. Yeah, Sylvanas is still not even that good because of Implosion. Yeah. 
I can see where Strife Crow might be thinking it'd be better to set up something else like the egg, for example. But I think Imp Gang Boss is still his best outcome here, considering both swipes have been used. So getting out the one ones is really, really good. Do you expect Sylvanas from Druid on six? I think I would, kind of, because the other play would be Torison. Right. And you want to have something to deal with. Well, basically, you need to have something on board to, to deal with Torison. Sylvanas is slightly annoying, but then there is that implosion. Yep. Oh. Implosion with uh, the egg. Now, do you use the Buse Sergeant? I guess you I implosion think... first to evaluate, right? Yeah, you need to hit at least three. All right, so what's going to be? Oh. And oh. that's a four. Now, of course, this could all be turned around if he just simply steals the 4-4. Four, four. Still, he doesn't have a swipe in the deck right now, so he's still no. a 4-4. Four, four. Whoa! Man, that's a pretty big deal, though. It is. There's no swipes, so Strifecore is going to use those imps for now. There is a Raf. Oh, wow. Raf is actually good. He can clear to imps. Three imps this way. Wow, that's so funny, man. The way it swings, it's just like... You know, he, he got the he got the four on the implosion, but he stole the the right minion anyways. Also, the sea giant man. Yeah, that there is sea giant. giant. There's also the void terror power of whelming play. Oh, you're right. It's also pretty awesome. Yeah, Strike has a lot of options. Power of Whelming, Void Terror. That sets up like that's like a pre big game hunter. But the thing is, you can't um, you can't do both. You can't clear the minions because if you play Power of Whelming and then hit the the Druid Call, like it just dies really easily because the, there's not a lot of health on the Void Terror. Yeah, that's why I think like getting um, well, he can't play the Sijan now. You got abuse the sergeants. Yeah. Might be going for the Void Terror play then. Yeah. Seems right, to be. So. The thing is, like. I guess he saw both Wraths. Oh, sorry, both Swipes and a Wrath. It's just, like, highly unlikely that his opponent has everything here. But it's only going to be five health. I mean, that's the significance. If this was a 1 1 Imp instead. Can you imagine the world of difference? Oh, you yeah. You basically definitely. played a core hound. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is still a dog, right? But more a demonic one. Uh, Farmer can deal with this. And just playing Glotha. Oh, wow. He's actually not killing the 9 5. He's going face. He's got Savage. Or he's got for, uh, Force of Nature. That's why he's going for lethal. There's Defender Vargas just waiting. And it's like Imp Gang Boss, Defender Vargas. And uh, Strifecore knows that Double Swipe is out of the way. Raf is out of the way. Most of the removal is out of the way. So if he plays Imp Gang Boss and taunts it up, that's 11 points worth of health. So he's effectively at 26. His opponent, if he combos... Will be well over that. Strife is afraid of combo at this point. He realistically might just play in gang boss, defender of Argus, and then trade into the, the Drake. And again, a lot of this wouldn't be the problem if that Nerubian wasn't the, there, if it was a 1 1 instead. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> the game would be much different. But I think Strife Crow still is in a good position. Man mode. Do Hit you go face. for face though, by the way? You Hit can face also the right play, right? Well, face? Yeah. I guess you can also Steph's hit the Drake face? into Arbor Druid. How is Druid how is Druid going oh. to go for all those taunts? We Hit did it. Face. We did it. He hit the face. <laughs> oh wow, Sinari stopped that. What? How how useful is that? That's pretty good, right? He can buff the minions and then he can. Wait, are we missing lethal here? No. No, no I don't think so. It's like he's at 26 health and his opponent only had um, 20 damage. So he's a little right. bit short. 
Shaft Core just like be the side relief that was like, oh man, okay, he doesn't have the savage really. Well, still looking good for Farmier with this board, and um, even though it looked good for Strife Crow and that scenarios, Voiter not doing much. Farmier oh. clawing his way back to take this match after this game, giving him a chance, giving himself a chance. I told you, man, it's gonna go to game five. It's just one of those days. Oh man, I, I'm I'm feel I feel sorry for all the Hiko fans tuning in. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's what that's what the big concern is. Implosion on the five two. One of his best chances for survival. Plays Sea Giant. Crosses his fingers for no damage, but that's going to be it. This zoo deck. Is it a zoo deck? I don't even know. This demon lock deck. It's gonna get uh destroyed again here. And now that's a two two series. And yeah, how devastating would it be for Faramir to be down 0-2 twice, tie it up twice, and then lose in game five twice? That's just like that's just too much, man. Um, there is only one explanation and one comment to that. Never lucky baby range. But he's not there yet. He is Dude, almost. He I mean, if he didn't steal that Nerubian egg, the game would have been over, period. Like it, right. it's just it's just a different game. Uh, the damage would have been the other way. That Nerubian survived many turns. Uh, he would have been able to protect that um, that core hound a little bit better. And uh, Shafko yeah. would have won. So that, that was the difference. He, he did need a little bit of stroke of luck to get past it, but he did it. And that was a really effective tool for him to climb back to the series. And now we're going to see a Farmer's Shaman again. And I'm really excited for the deck. So it will be Shaman versus Demon Lock from Strife Crow. And I believe it gives a Farmer an edge because the Shaman has a lot of, lots of removal, silences, hexes for all those Void Terrors, you know, can deal with the board, can deal with the big dudes, and uh, can also set up board itself and uh, even go for damage. So I, I, we didn't see any heals from Strife Crow. Strife Crow's basically going for the board um, presence. So Farmir got himself here to game number five versus Strife Crow. Can Farmir win? Can Strife Crow step up his Demon Lock game, not give the Nerubians to his opponent and actually take it? <laughs> well, I, he definitely can. Uh, I think we're going to find out in just a second here. Here we go. Lightning Storm being kept. Excellent choice. Shaman versus the Zoo. No more time to waste, man. We're on the clock here. It's almost 12 in the noon which means it's almost time for us to finish up here so uh let's get to it let's see if the shaman deck can complete the reverse sweep so right, looking at the yeah void walker on curve um i'm not sure how good void walker is like a lot of people cut void walker and mistress of pain from from the um the demon lock strive so is playing a bit of a different version Double Haunted Creeper, I believe it's alright to have it uh, so early because you will be able to, to play them and um, defeat the totems, you know, like just fight for board. But then for Faramir, he has a really nice curve. Coin Harvest Golem into Harvest Golem into the Destroyer. Hmm. Alright, well, this is a little awkward now for Strife Crow. Huh. I guess you just have to play the uh, Haunted Creeper and just let bygones be bygones and nice. let your go Harvest Golem rule the world. Harvest Golem just stating the obvious. He is just staying there, doing what he wants. No spider is going to contest the Golem. And then there is his brother just waiting to enter the field as well. Yeah, you know, this is kind of like uh, post next Ramus in a way. Remember when Harvest Golem was still being used all the time before people started uh, phasing it out? It's still a great card. Just people don't think about it as much because Spider Tank took all the glory. It actually feels like an area around Stormwinds where there's like a lot of Harvest Golems. And um, I'm just expect half expecting the Fires Brotherhood to jump on us right now. <laughs> Oh, check this out. So a knife juggler being drawn, that's interesting. You can silence one of the Harvest Golems, suicide in, and then uh, play... 
or you can play knife juggler and you can get five juggles. That's mm-hmm. pretty inconsistent. The implosion also gives you opportunity to guarantee kill off one of the harvest golems too, but it plays into lightning storm. I, I like it. I like the juggler turn. If you go for implosion, that doesn't do anything. So that might be pretty strong. All right. Nope, to the face is not good. He needs it to the board. He needs at least at least one. Wow. Oh, actually. Can he clear? No, he can't clear everything. Yeah. Or can he? Uh, so he hits here for one. The knife, uh, first knife hits. All right, he can clear both, but he won't be able to clear the two-one. Still, that's an amazing clear. Right. And now Lightning Storm happens, but... Light Strife Crow got Lightning Storm before the Implosion. So now Implosion becomes a lot stronger. And if it hits for four, if this Implosion hits for four, man, I mean, it's it's going to be really hard for Faramir to immediately climb back because then Void Terror and Sylvanas become a lot stronger because they, they come down on a safer board. Oh, yeah. It hits Sylvanas for two. Uh, That's painful. Okay. Well, at least they do kill a totem. There's a power mace. Yeah, I guess you could say it's marginally better. <laughs> oh wow, there's a juggler now. Um, do you play preemptive Sylvanas to deal with uh, possible fire elemental on six? Yeah, because he can't fire elemental on Sylvanas. Otherwise, you steal it. What well, you can also what you can do like to play around hex. You can tap, and go with juggler into something, but you will have to get something good, like something for two. Yeah, I but the so next fun. turn you can do the same thing. You can knife juggler, void terror, and tap. And also you can void terror on Sylvanas if your opponent plays, like doesn't choose to play around it. Yeah. Oh my god, actually. Oh, it's actually going for Fundamental. Oh, wow. Oh, man. This will be huge for Strife Crow. Void terror into void terror. He can create the world's <laughs> the world's biggest void terror. It's insane. That oh was man! Such a big turn. Just get a um, six five, and you get an eight eight. I guess not. Wait, you, you do that right? Like, there is no Just reason not to. Knife juggler void terror. Hell yeah! Um, yeah, that's fine. Like, you don't sacrifice the juggler, but you do get a one more knife. It's an 8 8, and you steal the 6 5. Oh my god! Yeah! Look that at that greed support. from Faramir single handedly pops costed him this game, I think. He has to Earthshock and Hex, and um, that's almost all of his turn. Well, that's still. Um, he can do something at least, right? So he is right. clearing his board almost. So it's not terrible, but it is. Uh, Alright, so he's not going for the. The Earthshock. That is oh, that is a lot of greed. That is, a, the, that is actually a, a, a lot of greed, now that I think about it. Yeah, Implosion hitting for four, and then Frog actually kills it. Well, yeah, I think Trifco taps first, though. There's still no need to rush it. Merubian Egg's decent just against the Lightning Storm, but not impactful right now. Is he going for the Nerubian Egg? Nerubian Egg and Void Terror? Um, <laughs> that's actually decent, I think. Hit the face! Void Terror yeah. and build it up again. How do you win versus this board? Like, if there is a 3 5, yeah. 4 4, 6 5, and 2 1, you can air shock the frog, but that's not what you like to do. I can't help but feel that uh, you know, Faramir partially shot himself in the foot here. He could have even Earthshocked the zero one one and then traded like into better damage. Um, and I have to imagine that with the power of Overwhelming, I'm just doing some napkin math, but that has to be lethal, right? Yeah, yeah, that is definitely lethal. Just power of Overwhelming the 4-4, four, four, kill the 1-2, he can even implosion here. Striker has all the tools to win this match, and he does it. And a four rolled on the implosion. The universe does not want Farmir to win a series today. Uh, but you have to kind of wonder if 
Uh, Faramir is just on tilt based off how things have panned out. Always coming really close to coming back, but getting denied three to two every single time. Never lucky, baby rage. But um, we've seen some uh, not optimal plays. And, uh, you know, still like getting uh, back from a 0 2 to a, a ma match to the game number five and uh, performing well. Like, um, he did make his choices uh, with some reasoning as well. Like, from our perspective, it might have been uh, incorrect, but then we see all the cards. And uh, he had something in mind. He was counting a couple of turns ahead. Maybe he wanted to use the Airshock for something else, like Malganis, maybe, or, you know, um, maybe in the Rubin Egg. So he felt like he is going to... Um, like he didn't see Voiter as well for Sylvanas coming down. Or he took a wild guess that maybe there is no Voiter in Sylvanas who have to trade into that 6-5 oh, no. saving the removal cards. Yeah, I guess there's so many ways for it to backfire. Power overwhelming as well, you know, that kind of stuff where you're never, you can't be too sure. But it ends up costing Faramir the series. And that means Strife Crow improves and Faramir falls further down the standings. And that wraps up week six, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We've run out of time. Uh, we would definitely want to encourage you guys to check out everything at esports.geforce.com, uh, as well as a big shout out to NVIDIA. I check out all their cool products with the Shield tablet. I've been using it. It's been good stuff. I love the stylus. And uh, that's going to be it. Nymph, any final words for the, the week before we head off to Germany? I think we had awesome. amazing matches. And uh, I'm definitely going uh, to say that I, I love NVIDIA Shield as well. Like using the grid. You just, guys, check it out. You, you can connect your NVIDIA Shield to a normal display and play Borderlands from it. You can play Batman Arkham Asylum. Like you can basically yep. play Hearthstone as well. And uh, all the other cool games. So um, the Shield is great. Uh, try it out and other than that Frodan thank you so much for, for hosting today it, had, it, it has been a pleasure casting with you likewise buddy I'll see you soon in the, the Ace event coming up uh, we're done so thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you guys next week for more action here at the NVIDIA Hearthstone Pro-Am tournament have a good week we'll see you guys next time